Well, if you never saw Torrey Holt play, it's called YouTube. Uh, he won a Super Bowl back in 99 with the greatest show on turf. It was called The Rams. It was really ahead of its time. Uh, he's a Super Bowl champ, 11 years, seven-time Pro Bowler. And the Chiefs last year and the year before, well, we saw that. It was it was called The Rams, and you were part of that. And by the way, Tory and his brother Terrence started the Holt Brothers Foundation to deliver on their promise to help kids who have uh, parents and guardians with cancer. Tory's always been known as complete class, lives in beautiful Raleigh, North Carolina. So... The Odell Beckham thing is interesting. Randy Moss was with the Raiders, and everybody said, he's cooked. <laughs> and then he goes to New England, he's the best player in the league. Yeah. And everybody said, Odell, oh, he's washed. And sometimes, Tory guys don't fit. Yep. It could be scheme. It could be it just uh, organization. Yep. I never thought he was working. The data said with he and Baker, it didn't work. I'm not blaming anybody. But I watch him, and I watched his dad 11-minute video. Yeah, I did, too. And he's open a lot. So you too. tell me. What's he have left? What do you see? Do you see the twitchiness? Do you see something there with OBJ? Yeah, I do. I, I think Odell still has a lot of uh, good football in, in front of him. Um, you know, coming off that injury, he may have lost maybe some some explosive, maybe not. Um, but just watching him, there may be a, a little a little loss there. Um, but I think he has a ton of ability to play. You got to be when I when I watch him, and just as you said, you watch him. When I watch, he just doesn't look um, enthused, excited to be there. And you have to be in a good space in the National Football League if you're going to play at a very very high level. Um, and so that's kind of what I see too with Odell. And then they have to continue. They have to be more intentional on getting him the football. Now that's say, explain that. That's right. And so when they come out of the huddle, the ball that the first read is to go to Odell Beckham right off the gate. That's being intentional when you want to get your best receiver or one of your best receivers to football. When you look at the L.A. Rams, they're intentional about getting Cooper Cup yes. the football. There's 13, 15, 16, 17 targets that he has an opportunity to make a play. So I'm not saying that Odell gets get that many of targets, but you got to be intentional in getting him to football. Then we'll see what happens after he gets the ball. We'll see how alive he becomes once he gets the football. We just don't know that because he's not getting it enough. And now – Odell has had his fair share of drops as well. Yes, he has. Too, right? But I think where if it's in Cleveland or if it's somewhere else and you bring him in, be intentional on getting him the football if you believe that he can still play at that level. You know, I'll throw this out. Um, Odell, as we said earlier, he runs a little hot. Yeah. T.O. ran a little hot. Yeah. Mo- yeah. Wide, wide receivers. We can run a little hot. <laughs> but Because <laughs> we want the ball. That's right. And we want you to be intentional on getting us the ball. If, if I feel as I'm the one of the better receivers on your squad. Well, you're the best athlete on the offense is almost always. Get me the ball. That's right. So it's interesting. If you go back to LSU, when Odell was there, there was no chaos. He was excellent. When you went to New York early with Coughlin, there was no chaos. He was excellent. Mm-hmm. And then the Giants at the end. There was more chaos. Eli's eroding the coaching situation. He struggled. He goes to Cleveland. 24-7 chaos. I'll just throw this out there. Is that Odell runs a little hot. He is in a situation like a New England or the Rams. Could be a much different player (laughs) than those chaotic last few years. And what I'm saying is you're a very mature guy, right? Mm -hmm. Like Larry Fitzgerald could run the league. Some of these guys... You put a little chaos around him, it doesn't jive with him. It's not their, they don't like it. And I, and I just say that. I do look at Odell and I think there have been times in his career where he just went out and was productive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In the last few years in New York and Cleveland, maybe these, he needs to go back to a better structure. Yeah, and, and that helps. That, it really does, uh, Colin. Um, when you are in a place where there's structure, there's good examples daily on both sides of the football, where there is – there is intent on winning. You can win. You are winning. It just changes the way that you come to work. Von Miller said it. I went to bed four and four. <laughs> I woke up seven and one. You telling me he's not motivated to play? Absolutely he is. He knows he's coming into a winning situation. He's coming into a winning culture. He's coming into a culture that's where expectations are high. But guys on the team are meeting those expectations. That's a different feel, man. And Odell is a... High level play. He can play at a very, very high well, level. So you played 10 years with the Rams, I think a year with the Jags. And a year with the Jags. Okay, so yes. so life's not linear, right? Like, the, was there ever a year for you 
there's a little chaos at the offensive coordinator or something. And you know, now you're a stable guy, right? Like it, but did you ever have a year where you're like, man, I'm just driving to work doesn't feel the same? <laughs> I mean, seriously, yeah. Greg, Greg Jennings told me when he went from the Packers yeah. to Miami, he knew in an hour. It's like, it is, this is not the same atmosphere. I had those moments in St. Louis, absolutely. I was at the peak in St. Louis, and I also was at the, at the low in, in St. Louis. But it was still my responsibility to come to work every day. It's still my responsibility to try to lead by example. If I want to change what is happening, it has to start with me. Uh, and so that was my mentality. So though we did not have um, winning years, a lot of years, right. I still wanted to make sure that I – was performing and doing my job, and hopefully that would encourage and inspire others to do theirs. That's kind of that's the way that I looked at it. Yeah. So you you played obviously with Kurt Warner, and uh, he changed everything there. And Matt Stafford goes losing culture to winning culture. We changed everything there. That's right. My bad. No worries. Hold me accountable. No worries. Um, are you surprised, Stafford? It day one, week one. Not at all. This this fast? Not at all. Why? Matthew Stafford is so smart. And, and when I watch him um, at, at the house in, in games and the way he gets up to the line of scrimmage and he gets them in and out of place quickly and then the play actually works, he's seeing things happen before they do. He knows what that winning play is to get them in. It's fantastic. And then he's also playing with guys, again, that have the same mindset that he has, that is working to be great, working to want to be a champion. That is who he's now with. And when you're playing with players like that, your talents are even more expressive. The players that you're playing with talents are even more expressive because you have guys that are thinking the same. Their intent when they go out to practice is to be better at what they're doing. There's a level of maturity and seriousness that comes, I think, comes with Matthew Stafford, as well as Cup and Robert Woods and Andre Whitworth. That's a good point, Whitworth. There's a lot of guys. These are grown-ups. These are grown-ups. These guys, they've, they've been to the Super Bowl. And they certainly want to get back, and they know what it takes, Colin, to get there. Matthew Stafford, to me, fits right in. You know, it's really interesting you say that. Stafford's very serious. Whitworth, we put him on the show, very serious. Aaron Donald, very serious. Yeah. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup. This pros, is what, man. Pros. pros. By the way, Jalen Ramsey, you, you were a little squirrely at times. He comes but, in. Uh, and you, and you know why? Why? Because when you look, when you come in that locker room and you got number 99 sitting in there every day, who's the best player in the room? Best player in the league, and he's serious, and he's focused, and ain't no BS with him a lot. I'm sure, these guys have their fun. Oh, sure. But when it comes to their work, Aaron Donald is one that sets the tone. You have to buy in. If you're going to be there, and we all come into the National Football League with hopes to get to a championship, right. be part of a champion, you better fall in line. So the, the Chiefs, uh, you were an earlier version of the Chiefs where you look different, you had different plays, you yeah. were faster, mm -hmm. you were a, ni a nightmare. Um, but Kansas City now is just, it's not quite right. They don't have Sammy Watkins. People now don't let Tyreek get over the top. Yeah. They're bracketing Kelsey. Um, you know, I, 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 I kind of bristle at people have figured them out. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you figure out talent. You, nobody's figured out Tyreek <laughs> right. Hill. But were there ever moments with the Rams? People didn't figure you out. But again, life's not linear. That there were stretches where you're like, okay, this coverage now, we're, we're struggling with it. Yeah. it or, or did it just always grow and never no, no, stop? No, no. no there's, 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 there was times within the in my tenure there in, in St. Louis when we were really good, where we had our lulls as a as, as an offense, where things just were not clicking uh, for whatever reason. It's you know, batters don't always bat well. They go into slumps. Uh, it happens. I think it's part of the game. But the, the, the thing that you have to do, though, is you have to keep working at what got you to that point. And with Kansas City, there's talks about the offensive line not being as good as it once That's was. New. Yeah. You know? And so, so, so now Patrick Mahomes is not as settled and comfortable in the pocket. Maybe he's not going through his reads as comfortable and fluid as he once was because he knows he – he has to make a play before he gets has half second back, left to throw. You know the, the 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 backyard football that we've been uh, that we've loved from the Kansas City Chiefs over the last couple of years is not quite there. They're not making those when he scrambles out. What I mean backyard when he scrambles out, and he throws it across. His, By the way, Tori, we also the, have seen a lot of their tricks. Yes, on tape. By the way, other Correct. teams are using the tricks. No doubt, no doubt. So teams te teams do have a better feel for what they're doing. But when you watched them the other night when they came out in that game. Uh, offensive, they were very efficient, moving the ball down the field. I mean, it, against the Giants, I mean, it, 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 they were sharp, but they were locked in 
to be sharp. The thing with the thing with Kansas City, and I'm sure Andy and the in the in the staff said is, guys, we got to be just we got to be for four quarters just as we were in that first and second quarter of that Giants game. Meaning we have to continue to be efficient, play fast, you know, be smart about what we're doing, play good football. The Chiefs are not playing clean football, Colin. Not clean at all. Not at all. They're turning the football over. So it's hard for an offense to get in any kind of rhythm or get any sense of continuity when you're not playing clean, when you're, when you're constantly turning the football over, when you're not converting on third downs. One of the things Sean McVay, I'm sure, loved about last week against the Houston Texans was the 12, the 13, the 14 plays that they were able to get because you're now able to establish a rhythm. You're able to now establish the game. You're now able to put your imprint on how the defense is going to respond. And Kansas City is not in that space right now you were as a- much as they would like. Um, haven't gotten into the Hall of Fame yet. Do you ever feel you're being punished because you were part of such a great collective? <laughs> because there were so many pieces? I felt that way at times. Um, but I was part of the, the, the piece. You know, I was part of what, yeah. we, what we accomplished. And not only a part of it, played a huge role in... You were seven, eight-time Pro Bowler. Yeah, you know, 7,000, 1,300-yard seasons, all decade. I mean, I was, you know... Um, I played if you made the all- six, six overall. So it wasn't like I was drafted seventh, sixth round or free agent and, oh, we got this great story. No, I was drafted six overall. So what comes with that is expectations. What comes with that is Hall of Fame-like ability. Um, and I think I was able to exceed a lot of that. Well, in fact, I saw a stat this morning. Uh, you had eight straight years with 1,000-plus receiving yards. By the way, the league wasn't the league it is now corners could grab you <laughs> right exactly <laughs> it was, it was a i was getting punished match. i got punished oh i know several times um you're also a college football hall of famer yeah yeah, yeah. You're, you're pretty good thank you man I, I mean i love football man I, I love everything about the game i like where the game is now i love by the way you averaged almost 80 yards receiving a game that's seventh most in league history yeah and again what what people don't talk about this <laughs> You could grab a wide receiver. You right. had to put receivers in motion so they could get off the line. <laughs> Correct. You could be grabbed. <laughs> yeah. You could be grabbed and wrestled. <laughs> That's right. People just forget. Like it's a totally different you, league. You had guys like Willie McGinnis, who's six five, two hundred and seventy five, eighty pounds, yeah. that can jam you to literally jam you to the ground. You had guys like Julian Peterson, who played with the 49ers, yeah. six three linebackers with whatever wingspan, I mean, crazy wingspan that would line up over top of you and jam you to the ground. You had guys like teams like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the true definition of a Tampa 2 uh, cover 2 defense that would knock your socks off if you were in their zone uh, and wasn't paying attention. So it was a, it was a different game, oh, no, a lot no, more it, violent. I was, I, I, but I'm glad I played in that era because I grew up quickly and I had to be tough. Certainly had to be tough to play in that are era. Are you a tough guy now? Tough? I'm 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 a little more chill now. Yeah, I'm older. I don't have to be as tough. <laughs> <laughs> no, but football, it, you got a football. You can't so, play. You can't play uh, weak. Th- this happens though. When like Tony Kukoc, I've said this before for the Bulls, because the Bulls had so many great players that Tony Kukoc gets lost. He was the best European player on the planet. Yeah, and he was a great player. But the stories are so legendary that oh, Pippen and Jordan beat him up. Well, yeah, they were better. Tony Kukoc for like a decade. Tony Kukoc was a great player. Yeah. 18-point-a-game guy, but Rodman and Phil and Michael Correct. and Scotty. So when you play in these great collectives, there's always a guy that gets like, well, he was good, but I, if you put Tony Kukoc <laughs> on those awful Maverick teams, yeah. he averages, Chris Bosh averaged 27 a game for the Raptors. And nobody pays attention to it. Yep. I always said Bosh could have been a 30-point-a-game a no guy. No question, absolutely. Cut it in half, go play with LeBron and yep. D-Wade. Yep. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm... And play with others, and you spread the wealth, and you spread the responsibility, and... More importantly, I still had to do my job. Though I was playing with those other great players, I still had to do my job. And not only I had to do it at a very high level in order for us to have that success. And again, Colin, I think I did that for over a decade. You did. Uh, Torrey Holt, great seeing you, man. Good seeing you, brother. Thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.